Thank you for following along with Forgotten Gear Restorations. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is the cleanest PB Classic 5410 I have ever seen. I mean, factory. Factory fresh. It's beautiful. Well, what's going on with it? Andrew, you're saying there's some feedback, especially with the reverb level up. But watch this. Reverb level is down. Normal channel. So we increase gain through this particular stage and we're getting feedback. Why don't we get this chassis outside the cab and see what's up, buddy? All right, Andy, so uh, just two things, three things to be aware of. One, um, the amp is in great shape. Um, this, this is the retaining nut for one of the chassis bolts, which has bent and it's supposed to stay re retained inside of the chassis, but it, it, it's not. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to reinstall it. Shouldn't be a big deal. Um, the other one is still, uh, holding tight, but it, yeah, it looks like maybe it was just set down hard. And since this is the side that has the biggest transformer, um, more of that, that energy had actually made its way through the chassis and, and bent this bolt here. So hopefully she'll go back in without a, an issue. And then uh, there's a resistor over on the, the western side of the open chassis here as it's oriented towards me. That is um, that has been disturbed as well by that same uh, impact. And I'll, I'll move that back into place. So um, you have a missing um, you have a missing sheet metal screw over here. Um, that is forming the uh, other side of the preamp cover plate. And, and you guys that are familiar with 5050s, or 5150s, I'm so sorry, uh, you're gonna be familiar with this as well uh, because it's the, the same design practically. So then I'll pop off the one for the power tubes instead of risking stripping this. I'm going to just get an appropriate size uh, driver. Let's see how lucky I get. Sometimes I just, sometimes I nail it. Sometimes I don't. Whoa, making myself look bad, huh? All right, let's try this cat All right here. Hey, third time's a charm. That's not too bad. I have hundreds of these driver drivers and uh, these sockets. And um, over the years, I've, pardon me, over the years I've found out that I need to have a certain size on hand at all times. Wow, that was um, tightened to such a degree that it took some of the, the paint off of that door with it. So. Okay, there's that. I'm still having a hard time getting this guy off. Let's see if I could rock her loose. That's not the normal thing. Let's gently pry from the back side. There we go. Okay, and then you can see, pardon me, and, and then you can see here that um, that the preamp tubes have been in different positions as this thing has been tightened. So we'll have to check for the, uh, the tension on those pins in the socket, certainly. Then we'll check for a uh, broken solder joints on the opposite side. But let me get her hooked up 
to an extension cab and uh, we'll see if we can test her on the bench. Hang on. So I'm not able to recreate uh, the whistling sound outside of the cab. I just checked your caps for ripple. It's, it's rock solid. Caps are great. Um, there, there's no ripple along uh, the, the low voltage supply or the high voltage supplies, which is awesome. But check this out. Um, you do have a TLO 72 slash 4558. You see that little guy back there? And, and guess what PB did? PB said, hey, let's put a socket there so the, the service dude can change it out if it fails. How fabulous is that? It's awesome. Oh, by the way, you do have one microphonic tube in the V1 position. Um, so we'll see how that fares. Um, let me take a quick look at the schematic and then I'll get back to you. All right, there's that uh, TLO72, rather it's a 4558, um, interchangeable. And I have a low noise version of that. There's a really clean um, positive and negative 14 volt supply there. So I'm not concerned about that. Let's see, here's my TLO72. We're gonna sub one of these guys in there and just see if it changes things. Let's just see if it makes any difference. And get this old guy out of here. Pardon my hairy hand. the old guy. And cheers, the new guy. You gotta carefully kind of bend these in. The legs in just a little bit before you install it. Otherwise you're gonna have a, a bit of a mess. I'm not particularly fond of the particular style of socket that PB used for these, but it's the standard one, and guess what? I haven't had a single issue with it since, or rather ever. Okay. That's that. This guy goes back in here. There. And then you can see that these shielded cables lead back out to the reverb cable jack here on the op on the other side it's it's a bit of a bespoke design so if, if you need a new reverb cable then um, if you're not willing to mess around with molex yourself then you're gonna you're gonna be calling PV parts department so I was actually able to uh, to trigger that whistling sound by removing V1 and having the volume cranked. So let's warm her up and see what happens. I'm gonna have to go momentarily, but at least get a little update just to kick things off. So in just a moment, I'll yank V1. See if we can instigate an issue. It's a remarkably buzz free. My gosh, this amp's in fabulous condition. So a little pop here. And no more whistling. How do you like that, buddy? Just had a bit of a noisy chip and then the microphonic tube here, which was not contributing to that issue, but it was contributing to noise overall. So, touch base soon.